Hey YouTube, this is James the Last Heart Games. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace the clock capacitor in your original Xbox. I did this as part of my original Xbox restoration video, but I wanted to break it out in its own video as more of a how-to guide. The clock capacitor in the original Xbox will fail over time. Essentially, the capacitor breaks, leaks, and can destroy the nearby components, ultimately messing up your original Xbox. If you have an original Xbox, you might really want to consider going ahead and replacing the capacitor before it becomes a bigger problem. Really, it's a little bit of a ticking time bomb. That being said, not all Xboxes actually have this problem. Only the Xbox versions 1.5 and earlier suffer from this issue. One of the easiest ways to tell if your original Xboxes is one of the ones with a problem is to look at the manufacturing date on the bottom of the device. On the bottom of this Xbox, you can see it was manufactured in December of 2001. Any Xbox with a manufacturing date before April 2004 are the versions that have this issue. If your Xbox is a version that has this issue, Let's take a look of how to replace this. The first thing we're going to want to do is just take the Xbox apart. There are six screws on the bottom that can come out, and then you can lift the top part of the Xbox off. We'll disconnect the hard drive. and then we'll remove one screw underneath the ribbon cable. Then we can lift the hard drive tray up and out. Next, we have two more screws towards the front of the DVD drive, and then we can disconnect the DVD drive and lift it up and out as well. Next, we disconnect these two cables from the motherboard. We'll go ahead and disconnect the fan, the motherboard power cable, the controller ports, and the front panel control board. With those items removed, we can start unscrewing the motherboard. This should be able to slide and lift right out, but mine got stuck a little bit. but eventually it came free. With our motherboard removed, let's take a closer look at this capacitor. This is the culprit right here. You can see where this capacitor is already leaked and some of the nearby components are already affected. Let's start by taking out the old capacitor. I'm going to flip the motherboard over and find the two pads on the other side. I'm going to apply a little bit of fresh solder here and then try to remove some of the excess. With all the excess solder removed, I'm actually just going to heat each of these a leg at a time and slowly pull out this capacitor until it finally releases. With the old capacitor removed, let's go ahead and clean up the area. I'm going to use a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol to clean the nearby components. Now comes the part that I find the most frustrating. I have to clear out the excess solder in each of these holes so that I can put the new capacitor in. 
cleaning out the solder in these tiny little holes is so fiddly and difficult. You'll see me use my desoldering pump and a desoldering braid as I try to open up these holes. Eventually, I think I've got it clear. This is the new clock capacitor I purchased online to replace the old one. You can generally find these online labeled as Xbox clock capacitors. In this case, this is a 2.5 volt 1 ferret capacitor. When you put it in the capacitor, you want to make sure that the negative side is on the shaded area of this circle. Let's go ahead and insert our capacitor into the motherboard and immediately find that we didn't clear the hole enough. So I'm going to take the time to clear out a little bit more of this excess solder. Once we finally have the hole clear enough, finally, we can insert the capacitor into the motherboard. Flipping over the motherboard, I'm going to bend the legs in opposite directions to keep it stable. Then we'll solder them to the board and trim off the excess. With the longer legs out of the way, I'm just going to clean up my joints to make sure there's no bridging. And just like that, we've replaced the capacitor. Mine leans to the side a little bit, but it's fine. It'll still work. With the capacitor replaced, we can go ahead and reassemble our Xbox. Let's put everything back together. If you have an original Xbox lying around, you're going to want to really consider doing this. It's good for the long-term health of your console. And with that, we're done. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more.